going on everybody? Ian here for Cult of Mac. And with Apple's release of iPad OS 13.4, they've given another huge shot in the arm to the iPad with all new trackpad support. And while the trackpad support is ideally designed for Apple's new iPad Magic Keyboard, it does also work with the Magic Trackpad 2 that you're used to using with the Mac. Now with trackpad support, the iPad takes a bunch of cues from both the Mac and the iPad for a really wildly functional interaction model. And best of all, if you've been using the iPad for a while and you know some of those old school multi-touch gestures that you can do on the screen, a lot of that will be really familiar on the trackpad. So with your trackpad paired, the most simple thing you can do with the trackpad is just use a single finger and navigate around the interface. It'll act just like moving your finger on the screen, except you'll see a little cursor on the screen actually moving around to identify where you are on the iPad. And with that, you can move over app icons and then do a single click and you'll launch an app or you can move over a notification or something else on screen or elements on screen and just click to interact just like you would a tap with your finger. Now, if you've been using a Mac for a while and you have tap to click enabled where you can just tap on the trackpad without actually clicking, you can also enable that on the iPad by going to settings, general, trackpad, and toggling on tap to click. So other things can be done with the single finger interaction on the iPad, like pulling up the dock, which is done by simply dragging that cursor down to the bottom edge of the screen, pulling up multitasking, which is pulling all the way down to the bottom of the screen and then pulling just a little further, pulling down notification center, which is done by going all the way to the top left corner of the status bar, pulling down control center, which is going all the way to the top right of the status bar, or taking apps into split screen by dragging them from the dock over to a split screen side, or even pulling something into slide over by just dragging it kind of over into that slide over window. You can also do things like dismiss slide over and pull it back out by dragging from the edge of the slide over app off to the edge or from the far right edge and pulling into the center of the screen. Now most of this sounds really complicated, but it's really just doing what you would do with a single finger. Now on top of all those single finger gestures, there's also a bunch of things you can do with two fingers on the trackpad. Most of them revolve around scrolling or moving around the interface, things like scrolling up and down on a list view or a web page, things like scrolling side to side in an image that's zoomed in, but there are also things like accessing spotlight, which you can do with two fingers on the home screen. Now, a lot of things that you're gonna do with two fingers are things that you'd normally do with one finger that have to do with very precise interaction that are less easy to do when you have a cursor moving on screen. So things like archiving items in your inbox or dismissing notifications can now be done by swiping side to side with two fingers instead of trying to click and drag with one. Now finally, there's the three finger gestures you can do with the trackpad and iPad OS 13.4. And these are things that replicate the old gestures that have been around on the iPad for nearly a decade. Things like taking three fingers on the home screen and pulling up just slightly, and that will bring you into the multitasking switcher. From the multitasking switcher, pull up with three fingers again, and it'll send you back to the home screen. Now, if you're in an app and you take three fingers and pull up quickly, it will send you home. And if you pull up three fingers and hold for a second, it will open up the multitasking switcher. So it's always going to take you into one of those two contacts. Taking three fingers and swiping side to side while you're in an app will actually navigate you to the previously open app as you move through the currently running apps and doing the same in the other direction will move you back forward through those instances, making it quick to switch back and forth, especially between two apps that you're working with or two spaces that you're working in. All in all, trackpad support for iPad is a huge step forward in making the iPad even more functional for a lot of people as a computer replacement. It's not ideal right now to have to carry the iPad and a Magic Trackpad with you, but when Apple does release this iPad Magic Trackpad, case cover keyboard thing, it will be a beautiful little combination to really be a nice, powerful iOS powered laptop. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos as we post. I'm Ian for Cult of Mac and I'll catch you guys in the next one.